Get ready to drop that puck because Joe and I are always ready for fun. So plant that flag right in your favorite spot as Joe gets ready to do the bunny hop. Wave hello and oops, I think we're supposed to be on air. We'll save the best for last. Sports Night is next. Hello everyone and welcome to Sports Night. And uh, on that note, I think this is gonna be kind of a corny show. You think, you think like most shows? Like most, like most, like most. absolutely. Um, it's been uh, an interesting week. Uh, we've had uh, we've had a bit of fun out there. And, yes, we have. Um, we are getting right down to it, and we've said that for the last couple of weeks, of course. But uh, now we're really, really. I mean, uh, you know, girls hockey done. Right. Uh, Nordic and alpine skiing done. done. Um, uh, boys hockey headed for playoffs this week. That's right. Um, one week left of boys basketball. Two weeks left of girls um, swimming, waiting for their their section tournament. Um, did I miss anybody? I don't think so. I think that's it. I think you are correct. Or, oh, and, wrestling. And, and wrestling, wrestling had had their section, that's right. their section team tournament last week, their section uh, individual tournament coming up this week. A lot of, a lot of action this time of year. Is it, everybody kind of falls into the same uh, mix. Everybody's in the section playoffs for the most part. Uh, a few teams uh, lagging for a couple of weeks. But it doesn't get uh, – it gets fun all the time. It's more fun every single time. Every single time. And uh, we will start with the boys' hockey team. They open section tournament play on Thursday this week, facing the top-seeded Blaine Bengals. Cardinals were really hoping they could pick up a couple of wins the final week of the regular season and start the playoffs with some momentum. But it didn't work out that way. On Thursday, the Cardinals traveled to Andover to face a Huskies team looking for its fifth straight win to finish the schedule. And they were not going to be de denied. Huskies surged through the early lead. Puck played through the middle. And this is not the right game. This is Champa Park game. Oh, uh, yeah. Which we'll be talking about in just a moment. But we were first going to talk about the Huskies game. Rewind. Which is this one. <laughs> there you go. Because it happened at Andover. And it played through the middle. Springs X Zitars behind the defense. Flips the backhand toward the net. Seeks it over the shoulder to Panson. Put Andover in front. Just 321 into the game. They keep the pressure on throughout the first. Pays off late in the period. Great pass to Reese Tolbane out front for the redirect. Andover has a two-goal lead. Cardinals looking for an answer late in the first, but Huskies keeper Maddie Rooney was on her game. She comes up with huge back-to-back -back saves late in the first. Keep the goose egg on the board. Andover adding to the lead early in the second. Tyler Vole with some nice stick work entering the zone and a quick wrist shot to be Hanson high on the glove side. Huskies dominating the action. They had 21 shots on goal in the second period. They finally get another one home late. Great tip by Christian Ledeen out front. Makes it four to nothing after two. By the end, Andover held the edge in shots 47 to 21. They score one more with just over 90 seconds remaining. Tolbane getting his second goal of the game, helping his Huskies to the 5-0 victory. You know, and in that game, you know, I thought Andover, they were coming to that game really on a, riding on a, on a nice high, and they really dominated Coon Rapids, I thought, and for the most part, and, and the Cardinals really didn't get a chance to get into any flow or any rhythm, and, and Andover made them pay for it. No, and, and really, the, the Cardinals played with them for the most of the first period, uh, but hu the Huskies really just jumped all over they them did. in the second. They did. Uh, I, I don't remember what the, the shots were in the period. It was like 21 to 6 in that second Something period. Like that, right? um, you know, and uh, Ty Hansen, a sophomore keeper getting just a second start, saw a lot of pucks uh, in that uh, in that contest. And and that's kind of been the, the story for the Coon Rapids hockey teams over the last number of years uh, is to you need to have strong goalkeeping because uh, they tend to be uh, outshot uh, on, on most evenings. And, and I thought Hanson played well. He came up with a number of big saves. I did as uh, well. The Cardinals did not put quite enough pressure on at the other end. And when they did have those good, good scoring opportunities, you saw why they have a girl playing with the boys varsity She's a, she's team. a good keeper, no um, doubt. Maddie Absolutely. Rooney is, is pretty impressive stuff. Uh, and we saw the best of it right there. Uh, maybe not. I, I don't know that that angle did it as much justice as, as maybe the up top can. But, uh, you know, she made the first save and then sprung all the way across to, to just absolutely deny. I think it was Jake Kellner uh, who had a look at a wide open net on the rebound. Uh, she's fast. Uh, she's very, very athletic uh, and quick and, and just a good heads up goaltender. That's why she's going to UMD next Correct. year to, to play hockey there. Well, the regular season ended with a Valentine's visit from Champlain Park Rebels, another team the Cardinals felt confident they could beat. 
The Rebels have struggled this season, much like the Cardinals, but they came in feeling pretty good after a 6-0 win over Irondale. Both teams were looking for a little more traction before playoffs, especially with the implications the outcome could have on section seedings. The Cardinals able to get on the board early, just over three minutes in. Puck played near side. Travis Hess takes the shot. Mike Fredrickson on the doorstep for the deflection. Coon Rapids has the 1-0 lead. First period was tight. Coming up here, back and forth the whole way. Both teams getting their chances. Jacob Alberwald gets to the good spot, rips a wrister in the net, on net. But Amon, Ammon is there, traps to his chest. Cardinals take a 1 0 lead to the locker room. Like jamming. Yep. Things changed a bit in the second with the Rebels bringing more speed, more pressure, and dictating the tempo. They outshot the Cards 14 4 in the frame, but Ammon comes up with the big glove save on this chance. But the pressure eventually pays off late in the period. Cardinals caught on the breakout. Reese Wood skates to the slot, beats Ammon, glove side to even the game at a goal apiece. Another chance coming up for Woods in the third. Joe Young watch as the nice toe drag. Get some space this time. Ammon is the shot measured and makes the save. Cardinals are going to create some opportunities late in the third. Zach Havelka gets around the defense, puts a good backhand on net, but the keeper's in position to make the save. This one is headed to overtime. Rebels ramping up the pressure again late in the extra period. Puck is played back out to the point. Brock Pakalski takes shots through traffic, finds the five hole. Rebels and the Cardinals regular season schedule with a heartbreaking loss in overtime. And that was a tough one because coming into the week when we talked to Coach Mo, Joe, he, he said these are two games with Andover and then against Champlain Park. Tried to get on a little bit of a momentum going into the section playoffs. Unfortunately, they couldn't do that. Well, and obviously we don't get uh, an opportunity to see the whole game. Nope. We just saw, saw the highlights, but uh, what I saw, especially in the in the highlights that from that game in period number two, and then in the overtime, that one, uh, you know, which turned out to be the goal, is uh, Champlin was was being more aggressive, going for the loose pucks, and that's what the game of hockey is all about. Absolutely, it's a, it's a series of short races to the puck, and it's all about reading and reacting. And and the Rebels were doing that better than the Cardinals when they when it was important. Now the Cardinals go into the to the uh, playoffs, number eight seed. They get number one seed Blaine on Thursday. Um, you know, they, the Bengals just beat them nine to one in their only meeting of the season. Uh, that's that's a tough road to hoe, uh, no question. Maple Grove, the number four seed, will host Osseo, uh, or they will get Osseo in the first round. Those top two games will be played at the uh, Champlain Park Ice Arena. The lower two games played at uh, the Coon Rapids Ice Center. Centennial, the number three seed, will play against Champlain Park in the quarters. And Anoka, the number two seed, uh, against number seven seed, Rogers. Now look at that. Anoka, the number two seed, and number eight seed in Coon Rapids, took them all the way to overtime. They did. And really, uh, that was a game when you look at it and, and and talking to coach Mo before the Andover game he said you know a lot of people were like uh, were they just off their game or what and, and he said no we just played that well we played as well as we are capable of and that's what this team really can, could have done uh, all season long yep. had they had they had that type of intensity that kind of speed uh, and, and showed that type of aggressiveness in every game um, and unfortunately I just don't think they did that when I think it was a learning kind of a learning curve for the, the boys hockey team again new coach new systems absolutely and and these are some things that they they made some steps forward they took some steps back but you know they did build some things hopefully for the future yeah and, and it's just again it's really sad that uh, Zach St. John who who's been the starting yeah. keeper since the sophomore year uh, ends up with a high ankle sprain late in his senior season uh, and has to watch the rest of, of uh, the, the end of, of his season. However, I think it's a really good thing. Uh, Max Ammon is also a senior, so he gets an opportunity to get a couple of varsity starts. That's really nice for him. He was in net, got a win against Irondale. Uh, that was big for him. Uh, and then you got Ty Hansen, who's just a sophomore. Right. Uh, gives gives him an opportunity to get some varsity time, and he's seen a lot of pucks. So uh, Valuable playing time. Huge. Uh, he'll have some, some huge experience. Uh, coming into tryouts he next will. year. Absolutely. Um, wrestling team started, the, well, they had the entire section, team section tournament on Friday last week. Used to be a two day affair. Now they do it all at once. Uh, and it's uh, just everybody gets on the mat and see who comes out on top. Cardinals, the number two seed. They got Forest Lake in the first round. And they hammer the Rangers 44 to 19. Your pins come from Josh Bryant, Mike Bothwell, Tyler Burdall, Nick Halseth. Couple of major decisions as well. Jared Jokowski at 126 and Keanu Baker at 160. That put him up against 
the Anoka Tornadoes, the number three seed. Cardinals got a close victory to finish the regular they season. Did. We were there. And the Tornadoes get the win. It's a tough one. Here it is, but at the same time, uh, Anoka didn't celebrate long because they got on the mat against St. Michael, and I think they lost that like 40, 44 to 19, something, something along the, the, the same score as uh, what the Cardinals had beaten the, the Rangers by. Um, the only pin came from Bailey Ratliff at at heavyweight, yep. but unfortunately, a little bit too late, and uh, they were already mathematically eliminated. A couple of major decisions from Josh Bryant and Tyler Birdall, um, but uh, you know they split the they split it right down the middle, seven seven uh, matches apiece uh, between the Cardinals and the Tornadoes. Unfortunately. Uh, the Tornadoes got a couple of extra bonus points. They started the meet with back-to-back -back pins and jumped out to a, they won the first five and won. Uh, they had a 21 to zero lead. It makes it so diff five. so difficult to get back into it when you're down by that many points. And and uh, you saw it, it was close as it, as it was at the end by two points, but unfortunately they couldn't uh, they couldn't get past them. That means after. Five, what was it from 132 the, up the right. Cardinals won seven of yeah nine. no absolutely uh, but not enough bonus points individuals take the mat on Friday the tournament is up in Cambridge I Sandy. they will go Friday and Saturday and I pretty certain we'll see at least a couple if not uh, a whole handful of Cardinals uh, making their way to the state championships those will be down at the XL Energy Center uh, next week um, yeah, just have to be a, be a, a champion or a runner up, right? Um, and I could see, I, I think, I think four or five guys. Oh, got I could see that as well, without a uh, doubt, to to make it to state this year. And we wish them all the best. We'll of course have uh, all the uh, news for you next week on Sports Night. Gymnastics team held its section championship last week as well. None of the Cardinals able to advance to the state tournament. Here are some of your top finishers: Kennedy Koval. Senior captain going out with one of uh, her better performances. She was the Cardinals leader in three of the four events, finished eighth in Bean. That's the only top 10 finish for the Cardinals. Kamika Hurdle was 16th on the Bean with a 7.975. Hannah Gross led the Cardinals on the vault with a 12th place finish. Kenny Koval was 19th on the floor. That tells you how strong this section is. Oh, it, it is. An 8.475 is a 19th place finish. Uh, McKenna Mudge not far behind her in 21st place. Uh, Koval was also 18th on the bars to lead the Cardinals. She was 13th all around with a 33 even. Hannah Gross not far behind, 16th place with a 31.10. And again, we talked about it all year. 125 score for the Cardinals, not bad at all. This was a team starting the year, wanted to get into the 120s, felt you know they should be able to get into the 120s right away. They were hoping to get to the mid-120s, which they did. Uh, their, their scores were right around 126, 127 yep. uh, for the majority of the season. Last couple of weeks, uh, sustained some injuries. McKenna Mudge was down for a little bit. They lost Becky Lammers for the last couple of weeks of the season. Um, but I think, don't no, quote me on this, we'll talk about it more definitely when we get to review time, but I believe Kennedy Koval may be the only senior on that roster. Um, so they're going to bring back a lot, of her, a lot of experience and a lot of talent next year. And again, we're talking about a program that is really taking good strides to get where they want to be. And they're up against some, some difficult challenges. Most of these other schools have a number of, of club gymnasts uh, who compete at a very high level year-round. Um, and, and put up big numbers. They also have a number of teams in their conference who have combined schools uh, because, they, because of their lack of numbers. The Cardinals do not have a lot of numbers, but they have yet to combine forces with any of the other schools around them, which is certainly, uh, I'm sure, something that, that has been considered and looked at um, and, and is certainly probably not out of the question uh, when you consider the lack of numbers. Well, that's the, th that's the key is the numbers, and if they don't have enough, they're going to they're maybe be forced to combine with somebody. But, you know, I think they've done a nice job as it is, just keeping the athletes that they have at Coon Rapids and forming that team. 125, 126 to 127, well, and, as you said. And remember, too, last year, some of the girls who are who, who joined the team last year and now, now are big parts of the yep. program this year, Last year, they, yeah, I'll try gymnastics. Oh, I don't know. Well, it looks, like, looks like fun. Last year, they were scoring in the 110s to maybe the mid-1 teens. 
This year they're into the mid 120s. Who knows what the future could um, hold? That's what they hope: is progress and, and build upon what you what you built this season, and hope to increase that for next year. Yeah. Well, swimming and diving team, as we mentioned, uh, they've got a couple weeks before their section tournament. The Section 7 AA meet is a week from Thursday uh, that it starts, and uh, that'll be at Northwest or, or Northdale Middle School Pool. Um, and then their state tournament first week of March. So uh, they've got some time. They do. Uh, to continue they uh, do. trimming their times and, and working on. Uh, which, which they've been good at this year. They've, uh, you know, they've been able to trim times and, and personal best week after week. So yeah, that, and, that's and, been and good. And another program where, where they don't have a lot of numbers. Nope. They knew from the very start that they probably wouldn't have the kind of depth they needed to compete on a team level uh, week in and week out. Uh, but they have continued to improve themselves each and every week. And now you've got a couple of guys uh, that, that may have a chance uh, come section time to, to try and get to the big tournament. Uh, and we will uh, have that news for you when it happens. But not, Absolutely. Not, not for, a couple for weeks. another couple of weeks. Yeah, was, exactly. Well, there's still plenty of winter left for Nordic ski enthusiasts. But for high school athletes in Minnesota, the season is over. Culminated last week at Giants Ridge in Bawabic with the state championships. For Coon Rapids senior Caitlin Benson, it was an opportunity to end her career on the biggest stage possible. And she did herself, her school, and her community proud. It was a beautiful sunny day on the course on Thursday. And as you can hear, Benson had plenty of support along the way, cheering her on to the best finish she could muster. She's been a great leader for this program for the past several seasons, so it was only fitting that she would qualify for and do well in the state championships. Benson finished the Classic 5K in 21 minutes, 16 seconds, a little faster in the freestyle, cleaning the course in 20 minutes, 51.9. Gave her a pursuit time of 42, 42 minutes, 7.9 seconds, make her 101st in state. Benson, a four-time all-conference skier, and this was her second straight trip to the state championships. A great finish to a great career for a great Cardinal leader. Absolutely. You know, what 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 she brought to this program and, and what she, other younger skiers saw that you can accomplish, congratulations to her for all the, you know, the four years that she's accomplished a lot of things here in the ski program. Yeah, and, and from what I understand, four, four times all conference, two yep. trips to state, only the fourth time that a Cardinal skier has accomplished such a feat. So, Great job. Uh, pretty, pretty impressive uh, young lady and uh, will definitely be missed from that program. Uh, boys basketball team we talked about off the top of the show, wrapping up their regular season uh, this week before heading into playoffs this past week. A couple of games on Monday night as we were sitting here being clowns. They were there doing battle and they came up short against Anoka. They were looking for the season sweep over the Tornadoes but lost 74 to 70. Timmy win, what a game. 23 points, six rebounds, and five assists. Jacob Dujmovic, 11 points and a couple of boards. Tyreon Johnson, a double-double with 10 points and 12 rebounds. Peyton Foy had eight points and six boards. And we talked about Timmy, you know, the contribution he's made to this program. He's had to pick up the scoring slack for the Cardinals and has done a, a stellar job at it. Well, and you want to talk about it, disappointing. I mean, anytime you, you – no, no team goes, yeah, we can handle a bunch of injuries. <laughs> but uh, for, for the boys' basketball team, they lose Sam Carver. Uh, their sophomore big man who, who's had a great season. Uh, they lose him. He, he got a torn labrum. Um, and then the very next day in practice, his backup, Tyler Brick, who had also played a, a lot of good oh, PT, um, goes down with an ankle. Back to back. I think it was a knee. Oh, was it a it knee? It was a knee. I knew yeah. it was a lower body. Yeah, it was definitely a knee. Lower body injury. Yeah, nonetheless, and both of them are, are going to be out uh, anywhere from two to six months. Yeah, so. and both are baseball players. Yeah, so. yeah it's going to make it difficult. Uh, they missed the spring. They do. That's unfortunate. It's very it, unfortunate. it really is. Well, the Cardinals knew heading into Blaine without those two big men inside the threats would make stopping the Bengals you know, a little more difficult. A little bit. Uh, unfortunately... Injuries can be a fact of life, so the Cardinals are dealing with it the best they can. The plan against Blaine, try and spread them out and attack from the perimeter. And on the defensive end, double and triple team their big man to try and limit his looks. Early on, the Cardinals with the lead, they knew Big Ben Shearer would get his points. It was just a strategy to try and slow him down. But even outnumbered, he got rebounds and buckets like that. At the other end, scrappiness wins out. Foy tears a rebound away, backs out, hits the three-pointer. Cardinals up by five at that point. We're going back to the other end. Shear carrying most of the load for Blaine. 
They feed him down low again. He battles through a double team and scores. He had 12 of the Bengals' first 15 points. What a force underneath. Cardinals perimeter game able to keep up in front. Rotation finds Dujmovic in the corner for three. Coon Rapids had four first half three pointers. Behind the, start, the strong start by Ben Shear and a couple of big baskets late, the Bengals able to take a 30 26 lead to the half. Oh, they're going to set the There's tone. Right. He, yeah, it wasn't. They set the tone right away in the second. Sam Garrity with the alley oop to Andy Leo at the back door. That sparked the 17 4 run for Blaine. The Cardinals trying to stay in this one. Off the steal, Dujmovic will find Timmy Wynn for the bucket and a foul. He leads all Cardinals scores with 20 points. But in the end, the Bengals able to just cruise to the victory. Big Ben led all scores with 32 points and handed the Cardinals a 69-54 loss. And Joe, he was very, very impressive. 32 points. Well, we, yes, he's he's definitely a, a, an impressive ball player. He yep. was fun to watch. Yep. It helps when the other team doesn't have anyone within six inches and 40 pounds of you. No, no you're right, but he, he could have scored 10. The fact that he scored 32 means that he was dominant at that position. He took advantage of the Cardinals' weakness and, and really put it to him. Again, six, at least six uh, inches I and 40 understand. pounds. L look, he's 6'8". Andy Leo is 6'9". His brother is 6'7". Correct. That's a, that's a big lineup for any team in the Northwest Suburban. But when you're missing your two big players, it makes it insurmountable. Right. And and all and all they did was continue to feed him inside. And it was Smartly. It, well, yeah, absolutely. And, and he's a good ball player. I'm not taking anything away from him. Uh, and the Cardinals did everything they could. It was kind of funny watching them swarm because they would – just like as soon as he got the ball, they would collapse three get three white jerseys around him, and they're all jumping around. It's like uh, it's like the the high school, well the junior high kid holding the ball up over the kindergartner's heads kids uh, heads. I mean it's it maybe not quite that dramatic, but it, I mean no you're right he absolutely was, he's a giant against against little people. Uh, it was it was kind of a very unfair advantage and, and to their credit they knew that and they took advantage of it. Um, it I thought I thought I was I thought he played a very good game. I really would have liked to see him and Sam Carver going at it. Oh, it would have um, been so would, entertaining. Would have been. And, and we're going to have that chance because so are the Cardinals. They would well, like absolutely <laughs> uh, because you know Shear is a Shear's a junior. He'll be a senior uh, next year. He'll be a senior yep. next year and uh, and Sam Carver just a sophomore so right. he'll be a junior next year. Uh, we'll get to see that battle between those two uh, next year absolutely. and, it, and I'm sure that it will be uh, entertaining and fun to watch. Uh, Cardinals uh, at Centennial on Tuesday in Howie. We'll be there? They finished oh, I better cancel some plans. <laughs> we will be there. They finished the regular season at home against Andover on Friday. Girls basketball team also on the court on on Monday uh, doing battle with the Anoka you know, Tornadoes. They didn't stay quite as close with, uh, with the Tornadoes, losing that one 71-45. Uh, Mackenzie Wilkins, the only one to manage double digits, scoring 12 points to lead the Cardinals. Kaylee Porish had eight, Cheyenne Siner seven, Aaron Jenkins six, and Marina Nyberg had five. On Wednesday, the Cardinals back on their home floor hosting a tough non-conference battle with the Matamidi Zephyrs. Zephyrs are one of the top teams in the Metro East and were coming in on an eight-game win streak. Cardinals skid, meanwhile, had reached 13 straight games with most of them by large margins. Still, the Cardinals go out every night in battle, looking to pull off a surprising upset sometime before playoffs. Zephyrs running the floor with numbers early in the first, a little give and go. McKenna, what win? Windbean, I practiced that before the show too. <laughs> Hit the wide open 17 footer. Coon Rapids keeping the game close. Mackenzie Wilkins, a little ball fake, then feeds Kaylee Porsche beyond the defense for the easy bucket. Matamidi, though, able to maintain a lead with everybody contributing. Defense leaving way too much space again, and this time it's Emma Grothaus with an open look from three. She makes a count. That really was the story of the game's efforts, moving the ball well and finding good shooters with wide open looks. Another three-pointer, this one from Abby Boyan. Matamida goes to the locker room with a healthy lead. Cardinals just trying to keep it respectable in the second. Megan Morehouse with the steal. Then goes coast to coast for the basket. The Zephyrs are just too much in this one. Another open look for Grothaus and another three-point basket. Might want to have a body a little closer to yeah. next time. They keep both their winning streak and the Cardinals losing streak intact with a 75-54 win. You know, and, and the, the girls basketball team, another squad looking for 
a little bit of winning, the winning taste in their mouth before they get to section play. Now they've got a, a couple more weeks left before they, they hit do. Their, their sections. But you know, this is the point in the season that you know you're going to try and get a win just so you get a little confidence well, back and, on your side. And as we've talked about all year, they're a very young team. And they are, and, and they are also you know dealing with a new coach. They that, are. Uh, coach Jacobson got the job what three weeks before the Peterson. before the, Peterson. Sorry, uh, before the season started. Um, I mean, not a lot of time to adjust, so it's been kind of a learn-as-you-go kind of season yep. for them. Um, they've been uh, nicked up more by, by illness than injury uh, throughout the year, but, uh, uh, you know, they keep battling, and, and that's something I, I – we've said this for years about just about every program. Uh, even when they're, when they're – you know, the, the David against the Goliath, the Cardinals never seem to stop fighting. Yeah, and I, and I think the girls are buying into what Coach Peterson is is telling them and, and is teaching them. And like you said, anything coming in, learning a new system, there's going to be some growing pains. So it's valuable playing time. And I know we talk about that all the time for some of the younger players, but you have to have that because you, you've got to be battle-tested, and, and they hope uh, they finish the season somewhat strongly, hopefully for them, and, and uh, continue well, to go. And, and a very young team, only yep. a couple seniors. Yep. So uh, a lot of great experience for these girls. They finished the week. Hosting the Blaine Bengals, losing 78-66 on Friday the 13th. Marina Nyberg led the way with 13 points. Mackenzie Wilkins, 11. Kaylee Porish, 9. By the way, all three of them sophomores. Yes. Very Just going to throw that out there. Cheyenne Siner had 9 points. She's a senior. Aaron Jenkins and Megan Morehouse each had a date. Cardinals host Centennial on Tuesday, and they're at Andover on Friday. And then we will see them the following a week, week from Tuesday. Yep. So. Against Elk River, at home. At home. At his home. At his home. Finally, we yes. get to, we get to do a home golf. I ball. like that. <laughs> a lot of road work for the for the CTN staff uh, these last couple of weeks. It continues on Tuesday when we travel to Centennial to see the boys basketball team take on the Cougars. Girls basketball the following Tuesday on the 24th, live from Roger E. Carlson Fieldhouse against the Elk River Elks, and then the boys basketball playoffs. We will we will be there. Won't be live. We will not be live. Probably St. Francis. It's my that's educated guess. We're hoping that the Shapiro's education isn't very good. Yeah. Well, I, don't I, I went to West, I went to Minneapolis Public School, so we all know what that means. I, I'd rather not travel as far as St. Francis, but well. I, you know, there's uh, I, it's a good guess that they're going to be on the, the road. C, actually, the CTN limo is available that night, oh, so it is. we will be taking right. the limo. Fantastic. Up. Yeah. Well. That's going to do it for this edition of Sports Night. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us. Continue to support everything we do here at CTM for the entire crew, including Howie Shapiro. I'm Joe Young. Say goodnight.